Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the workshop. It is fantastic to have you here as ever because on today's episode, finally, at last, we are going to make this thing work. This is a Monarch 10EE lathe. Thank you for joining us. Today's sponsor is Casper. Now, you'll remember about five months or so ago, with actually Jason from Fireball Tools, Will, Jason, and I, we built an industrial bed frame, and on that bed frame, we put a Casper mattress. So for the last five months, I've been using it and absolutely loving it. And I would love for you guys at the end of this video to go to casper.com forward slash forge to get yourself $100 off of select mattresses when you use code FORGE at checkout. Investing in good sleep is always a good idea. Thank you, Casper, for sponsoring this video. Thank you guys for being here. Let's talk a little bit. Now, I purchased this lathe. Well, not actually this lathe, but I purchased a lathe about seven months ago now. And I have still not even turned this one on. This isn't the first lathe that I was meant to have here. First lathe ended up looking a little like this. So as you can imagine, that left me a little traumatized about the whole kind of lathe purchasing experience. Anyway, that lathe got dropped off a truck or a loading dock or something like that. We get a call, you know, hey, uh, your lathe is in pieces. About a month and a half later or so, we finally get this new equipment arrived. But the challenges of this machinery buying experience were not over then. It's a very long story, but essentially $1,600 worth of electrical work later, even more frustration, the lathe finally turns on and is operational. Now this is a Monarch 10EE lathe, and these puppies are meant to be a beautiful piece of equipment. This one was made in November of 1947, and frankly, it is an absolute tragedy that I have not found the occasion to use it. So today, we're making that occasion. I need to get it set up for being able to get a tool in it. I need to clean off all the dust that's on the bed, give it a really good clean, fix some other things, and then do our first ever lathe project. Let's jump on in. Well, there's no way that's gonna work. I have to get a new hose. Next step is this. We need to be able to get tooling into this. The lathe came with this quick change tooling holder. Very beautifully cross-threaded, as you can see. The downside is, however, that it only fits about a half inch shank tool. All my tools are a 20 millimeter or three quarters of an inch shank. There is no way that is gonna fit inside of there. Options were either mill out these tool holders or upgrade, so I decided to upgrade. I ordered what I thought was the size up, but I'm a little bit nervous that it might have been a couple of sizes up. Well, here they are next to each other. This might not work. So this is meant to go in there, and this holds the tools. Oh my goodness. That is close. Your tool slips in there, and you tighten this down. But what I don't understand is how I actually get this to go into the quick change holder. Oh, oh, this is making sense. Okie dokie. This lever tightens and loosens the quick change attachment by pushing up and down this little, I guess you might call that a gib. But this is the plate that's meant to mount inside of the lathe. And as you can see, there is no way that that is fitting in there. And at last, we have a quick change tooling set up here on the lathe that'll fit the tools that I need it to fit. This hopefully gives you a better idea of how that works. You loosen it, this tapered piece comes up, 
this can now come up and then it can easily drop back into the right height and be tightened down. I think this is the compound and this is set at 45 degrees which means if I ever want some like super accurate um, in and out movement I can half the degree of accuracy we have over here by having this set at 45 degrees but I don't want it to move at all in normal use, so I actually pulled off the handle. There's actually a little screw in there that tightens the gib inside of this. And so with a little bit of tightening there, this compound is now locked in place. So the next thing that I want to deal with, now we've got this set up, is I want to deal with the chuck. The chuck is what holds your workpiece in a lathe. This here is a collet chuck, and it's a, a very strange type of collet that it uses. We're meant to have a 5C chuck, didn't ever arrive. It is pretty cool how this collet chuck works, however. You have this big old wheel that you can use to uh, very quickly, toollessly, change collets. But what I want to do is I want to sacrifice some of the precision that this uh, collet chuck allows for the simplicity of a three-jaw chuck. We can always put this back on. But that means I've now got to learn how to get this off. One, two, three. I have a feeling this might well be what we need to tackle. Question is, though, do we have the tool for it? Okay, I quickly ground this up, and uh, this will have to do. Fits in. That was one. That was two. Uh, that was three. <gasps> it's loose. <gasps> no way. Okay. We got a chuck out. Let's have a look at the back of this little three jaw chuck. Not super amazing. So these things here are a little bit wiggly and I don't think that can be good. So let's see, nope, 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 nope. Thank you, Will, for finding me the right Allen key. Is finding it the same thing as hiding it? On your bench? <laughs> okay. I think I'm gonna take all these pins out actually so I can properly stone this surface and get rid of any of the potential buzz and dings a little bit. There we go. Much nicer. Let's clean these up and then screw them back in one at a time. So, let's see what happens when we tighten it up. And a one, and a two, and a three. Oh my goodness! That is so cool! US Navy ACCTG number, serial number, 100002. How? Awesome is that. The second one they ever did. You reckon that's the second chuck for the US Navy? To the second chuck for this machine, or the 102,000th, and I don't think that they had 102,000 of these in World War II. Love to hear what it is that you think those numbers exactly mean. Oh my goodness, there is nothing around about this. So I just put an indicator on the side, and it was way off, scarily off. You know, there's an old piece of equipment. Lord knows how it was treated. Oh. Oh my. That is way out. Oh, it's so far out. How far out? So far. It's not even touching. So keep going. Oh, that's not good. Well, I fixed it. It is way better now. And it was all my own fault. Anyway, I think we need to clean it up a little bit. And I think it's now about time. Oh. <clears throat> There's a light stand there. It is now about time to make our first chips. I'm gonna put a piece of steel on there, see how it cuts. Before that, however, let me run you through how it turns on. So this is an interesting old piece of equipment. And the way they get it to have a really good variable speed is they have a motor here that is purely a generator. And this generates DC power, and it sends that DC power back inside here. And through all this glorious 1942 engineering, it is this motor in there, which is the actual drive motor for the spindle. This knob here controls the speed by turning through this fancy schmancy stuff. It is just a glorious contraption in here. Our electrician, fortunately, super smart guy, 
guy was able to fix some of the problems that we had when it arrived. When it got here, it wouldn't go past 700 RPM. Now on the dial, this is meant to go to 2500 RPM. And what was happening is there was a broken component in the electrical system that meant it was essentially holding itself back. And that was the result of a faulty dynamic braking resistor relay. Thank you, Will. I don't understand it a whole lot, but it's now working. We have the start button for the generator. And that then means that there is that DC power ready to go. And with a flick of this switch, we'll be able to turn on the spindle. Wow! Okay, that was tweaked out. I don't want to go that fast. I just splattered myself in oil. Here, I can adjust the speed now just by turning this down or up. So as you can see, we really can get the speed going on this thing. For some reason though, I simply cannot get it to go past 2,250, even though it should be coming here. So to turn it off, this just flicks back to the middle, and there is a uh, braking circuit in there, obviously as we talked about. It can also go reverse very easily, so it's cool. It brakes really, really fast, which is very handy if you're doing production. So we'll top off the oil real fast. Okay, so now at last, it's the moment of truth. It's time to make some chips. This is the piece of steel that we're gonna cut on. I've got a fresh insert in the lathe tool holder. Oh yes, here we go. Generator on. Now let's work out how to use this thing. We know that's on. And we'll set it at about 1200 RPM. So I'm trying to work out how I can get this carriage to feed by itself. I have thread sprint feeds and then belt feed, gearing setups and watch my doodahs top and bottom. And uh, this thing isn't, isn't properly working and engaging in left hand or right hand. It just sits only in feed. So this is a little bit concerning. I would like this to work. It kind of sounds a simplistic thing. You know, it seems pretty simple. I'd like this lathe to work, but I really would. Nope. Okay, with a little bit of fumbling, I found out that this button here changes forward and reverse for both the carriage and this, allowing it to switch from feeding with this or this. I.e., now that that's in, this feeds in, but our carriage feeds the wrong way. However, if I pull that out, this now feeds out and our carriage turns the right way. The question is, what did I do over here to make this happen? Aha! I think we've got it. And that means that it is now time to at last make some chips. So after making my first few cuts on the lathe, I am actually really happy. The thing runs slick when you're cutting and I'm pleased. I'm pleased that we were able to get the tooling holder set up on it and I'm pleased that we were finally able to get it operational. It's been sitting here in the workshop unused for far too long and so today has been a great day and a day that I'm pleased to have shared with you. Thank you guys for watching this video. I know we didn't build a whole lot, but I'm very pleased, you know, it's, it's, it's good that we put the time into actually getting this thing up and running at last. As we round out the video, I'd like to thank today's sponsor, which has been Casper. Now, Casper, as you know, very kindly sent me a mattress about kind of five months or so ago, and I have been sleeping on it on the Shinbuster 2000, which is the steel bed that Jason Fireball Tools, Will, and I made, and I have 
been loving it. I have just found it extraordinarily comfortable to sleep in. It suits the geometry of my body very well and it's designed that way. Casper doesn't mess around with their mattresses. They combine multiple supportive memory foams in just the right places for just the right amount of sink and bounce in the mattress. The mattress is also breathable which means that you can get a much better regulated body temperature through the night. And they now have five mattress types. You can choose from the original Casper, the Wave, the Essential, the Hybrid Wave, and the Hybrid Casper, and they don't just do mattresses. My bedding is from Casper, and I've been really enjoying that. Purchasing from Casper is risk-free because they have a 100-night sleep-on-it trial. That means 100 days, you can sleep on the mattress, and you can turn around and say, well, actually, I didn't like that so much, and there are no hassles of returns if you're not satisfied. Don't be daunted by ordering a mattress online. They show up in a very small box. It's actually pretty cool seeing them unwrap, and it's all around an extremely convenient experience. So be sure to click my link in the description and get $100 towards select mattresses by visiting casper.com forward slash forge and using code forge at checkout. Terms and conditions do apply on that. Thank you, Casper, for sponsoring this video and helping us all invest in our good night's sleep. Thank you guys for watching. It's been a pleasure as always, and I cannot wait to see you on the next one. Bye-bye.